Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Villa Vrindavan in beautiful Tuscany, Italy. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center, Kostuba Das, and special guest for Q&A Day, His Holiness, Sachinandana Swami, who's our guest at the retreat, Big Harry Bo. We have a special podcast microphone, so you can't hear out there all the cheers that went on behind but everybody cheered and put their hands up high we're having an adventurous week if you missed the earthquake the other day that was quite wonderful and we're here today with such we had an earthquake in the middle of our podcast how how historic it was it was it was quite historic Maharaj Maharaj we're so honored to have you welcome everybody back home back on the east coast it's uh, 8 a.m. Eastern time, and we are here at 2 p.m. It's sleep in Saturday, we call it. And Maharaj will join us for the next two days as well, not only live, but on the podcast for Q&A. And all the students here will ask their questions live. We'll call them up. They'll say hello. They'll say their name. It's, I'm looking forward to it. Um, Miss Mara, Miss Mara is here off camera. Do we have any announcements, Miss Mara? Uh, we have back to recovery group meeting at 9 30 9 30 a.m today and uh nityananda chandra shloka group meeting at 10 a.m eastern time okay that sounds great also we have a lot of retreats coming up at the farm super soul farm please check my uh website ragunath.yoga or go to the link tree on my instagram page um at ragunath yogi okay Hi, Mr. Kostuba. So Kostuba's compiled all the questions, and I think it's best if we uh, call the person up, get to know the get to know the live live audience, and then um, Maharaj will answer the questions. And if he thinks we have something to offer, he'll go back and forth. Kostuba. Yes, we're gonna. Um, some of the questions are from people that aren't here. Am I correct? In that? Oh, they're from when you said they're from your group, your picnic group. So do you know who they're actually from, the ones that you sent to me? And is that okay if they come and ask the question? You work on that. And meanwhile, so, so now I'll say this. Um, the questions today, they're, they're, um, they're, most of them are a little bit deeper than a lot of the questions that we normally handle. Like they're for people that are practicing bhakti already and know a lot about it. They're not kind of like, yeah, they're not like um, from an outsider point of view trying to get to come in, but most of them are from people that sound like they're practicing bhakti, they're practicing sadhana. They, some of them are quite specific. Um, so they, uh, anyway, we, we can try to put them in context as we take them on. Okay, so why don't we start with our dear friend, Amarnath, who uh, has, a, has a deep question from Maharaj. And uh, let's see if we can, how we'll get everybody into the camera here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're talk about our live live. Okay. Let's uh, just introduce our live live. This is Amar Ananda. He's from 
lives in Bosnia with his family. We love him. He's an uh, inspiring devotee. Um, and just love having him around. Amarananda, where, where did you first meet devotees? Um, Hare Krishna. First, um, I met them not in Iran. I was in the business street with my father in Czech Republic. Then I'm in the Prague. Then I saw them dancing in the street. And I coming from like a Sufi background, I understood this is something like, uh, yes, I know this. So my father gave me some, he said, why you don't give them some donation? So I gave them some donation. They give me back Simply Wonderful. Explain what is Simply Wonderful. It's a sweet, very, you must try. <laughs> but this, as, as, as the name saying is Simply Wonderful. But then I just said to my father, can I join you later? Because I couldn't say goodbye to them. So I chant with them all the way. And when I came back to Iran, I, I actually, then I could find them there. So this is how I'm happy for that. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you. So please ask. Yeah. Um, uh, if this is uh, connected to the morning lecture when uh, you spoke about that we have, uh, uh, you know, many desire to fulfill in this material world, or we need to also have a desire to maybe, is it okay? Yeah. So also we have a desire to also to avoid the suffering. Um, my question is that how can we transform or purify those egoistic desire we have? More, my question is to those subtle desires for recognition, um, to be loved, to be accepted, etc., and transform those desire to, you know, unconditional love for Krishna, to serve Krishna. In one way, to put ourselves still as a center, although we practice uh, bhakti, we practice spiritual, uh, we have a spiritual life, but I have seen in my case, like, still you are the center, but the whole idea is that you go out of the center and Krishna comes to the center. So the desire should be there, but how can I transform this desire? Yes. Uh, am I audible? Uh, and I, I want to avoid that the microphone goes into my stomach, so <laughs> it's so close. <laughs> uh, to transform desire is a great project, really. And uh, it is uh, something we have to do gradually. Uh, to put uh, Krishna or God more into the center, of our lives has to happen, uh, not like an explosion, but like a gradual development. And I would simply recommend you, uh, uh, to, uh, to you and to all of you here on the um, podcast, uh, uh, a few steps, starting with simple baby steps and then progressing to a more, um, uh, perhaps uh, challenging steps. Uh, to put Krishna more into the center, I would recommend mm, that you do uh, try to relate what you are doing uh, with Krishna. Mm, to, uh, I remember there was once a beautiful opera singer in um, Germany who is, took great interest in uh, Bhakti, but she was then one day uh, violently attacked in the parking house, and uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, then the next time I met her, she said, "I'm now practicing take one do, and I'm doing this for Krishna because I want to protect my body uh, and keep it uh, fit." Uh, so that I can use it in the service for Krishna. So, so this is using everything, even practicing self-defense <laughs> for Krishna. You'd somehow put Krishna in because he is there. Uh, without Krishna's existence, we could not uh, be there. Yes, we cannot see him, uh, but can you see the oxygen in the air? No, you uh, feel that uh, it is there. And if it's not there, then you suffocate. So connect anything you do with uh, Krishna. For instance, when you 
offer when you eat before you eat you can offer the food uh, you can make an elaborate offering but sometimes you can just place your wonderful italian pig, a fix i wanted to say uh, on a on a stone slab offer them and then take them uh, if you're a musician you like to sing sing uh, 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 simply uh, the names of the Lord, whatever is your dress, whatever is your path, whatever is your work, whatever is your illness, <laughs> what, uh, just sing the names of, of the Lord throughout the day. And as you give Krishna more and more space, you will see that more and more light begins to fill your life. It's almost like when the sun comes into your uh, uh, life. You just have to open the windows and uh, or the curtains, and as it becomes more more prominent in your room, the darkness will go. So just try to connect anything you do, anything you eat, any work you do with Krishna, and then something will happen. Krishna will spread his influence in your life and very naturally very joyfully without force you will become uh, krishna conscious that is what i would like to answer can i add a little bit to that question um we're practicing bhakti we may find a comfortable position while we're practicing. Like we may make friends with the other bhakti yogis and um, find that this is a nice community and this is a nice place to be. And, and um, I come to the festivals and we get together, we have nice relationships and everything's nice. And I might just get a little comfortable in that position and not actually ever deal with maybe that those more subtle kind of attachments that I have deep inside um, that are preventing me from becoming a much more deep, deep devotee, a more deeply surrendered devotee, a more deeply loving devotee, because I'm just kind of in a comfortable place. Do you have any advice you could share for someone feeling that way? The, the comfort lovers. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, there, there are two ways you can um, take on challenges, knowing well that you that life starts beyond your con or growth starts really beyond your comfort zone, or you t could take the natural path. There is a forced path in bhakti uh, or in spiritual life, which I see many people do this do and there is a natural part let this comes from vishwana chakavati taku let me explain when you do something forcefully you restrict yourself you give yourself rules and regulations you want to follow you uh, are putting your alarm clock every day uh, 50 minutes earlier until you come to your dream time, two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and, and so on and so forth. And uh, you you fight against the laziness, the lethargy, <laughs> and so on. There is certainly place for this, but there is also a, a natural path. What that is, I want to say as a cliffhanger, and now I don't want to say it, uh, just in a in one minute, I would say it. There are two ways to, for a mon mango to become soft. One is to beat it. And the other is to let it stay on the tree exposed to sunlight and good water. And it will also become soft. Now there is a distinct feature, a difference, difference between the two mangoes. The one which softened by force will not be sweet. Only the one who uh, uh, was growing and ripening on the tree will become sweet and soft. So in spiritual life, you also 
need to, uh, to see. Sometimes there are a few things you should definitely avoid, like killing yourself with drugs or, or, or things like this. Uh, but the other things, the more subtle things, come naturally if you stay on the tree of bhakti, which has two main roots. One is hearing about Krishna regularly, and the other is chanting his names regularly. And then this juice uh, will come into you, and you will become juicy and sweet uh, and uh, naturally grown. See, in, ca in this age, if you, uh, I once told this to a yoga instructor in New York, a well-known yoga instructor, mm. Uh, I said, you are always pushing, pushing, pushing yourself. But in bhakti, there's a pulling force. It pulls you. And that uh, makes you nat naturally ripen and inspired and so on and so forth. Mm. Uh, from a little hearing about Krishna comes more hearing. From a little chanting comes more hearing. And then there is so chanting comes more chanting and then there's so much light in your consciousness so much happiness that you won't have to fight any longer with the desire to become famous on internet uh, by standing on your hands um, so that everyone will appreciate you Haribol. <laughs> beautiful answer i have nothing to add to that very complete answer thank you so much maraj um, you know, I did not really introduce Maharaj so much. Maharaj is a spiritual leader, and he's a very, very uh, deep spiritualist that me and Kostuba have been uh, looking up to for literally many decades. And we are very, very appreciative of you in our life. And he's been a repeated guest on our show, especially at the Wisdom of the Sages retreat in uh, Super Soul Farm when he came and he gave classes on a regular basis. And we like to have him back again and again, and our audience loves him, and we love you. So thank you for coming back, Maharaj. All right, so we have some more questions now. And uh, for these questions, we're going to reach out to our very dear friend, Jamuna of Happy Girl Kitchen. Please come on up here. She's, she was kind of uh, with another group that were come on, coming up with questions, and she's going to represent them. Jamuna, she's from Northern California. Yes. Okay, and she, she's a very wonderful, sweet devotee. Maybe. <laughs> and, she, it's a, it, she has a, it's a vegan uh, restaurant. Uh, also, um, what, do you, what more do you do there? I know that you have your cookbook. You produce, uh, Happy Girl Kitchen produces jams and jellies and things like that that you can order. It's a whole prasadam thing going on there, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she's also one of our sage group leaders too. She's very, uh, everyone loves her sage group. So we're, we're very happy that you made it. You came a long way to come to Italy from California with her family. Yeah. We are having such a nice time. Thank you both. And thank you. It, it's really so great that you came this weekend. It just makes an already special thing even way more special so thank you okay now do you do, are you going to just recite it by memory or do you want it from my phone yeah we can do one at one at a time yeah okay okay Hare krishna maharaj so we were um out by the pond here um, talking about, okay, what are the questions? Because we felt like it was a little bit of homework. So it started some nice discussions in our groups. And one of the questions that came up is, um, how do you develop compassion for someone who's hurt you? And especially if they don't want to have um, a, um, they're not going to change their ways or they don't want to make amends. And we felt like a sannyasi's perspective on this is very special because you you have um, such a unique position of being more detached than the rest of us. So we would love to hear how you do this. Thank you for these deep uh, 
questions. How can we uh, develop compassion for someone who hurt us? See, uh, if you are still full of resentment, it's very difficult or very theoretical um, uh, to, uh, to, to, ha to show compassion. Uh, you first need to come to a place of forgiveness. Now, uh, this can, I find out the most easiest way to forgive someone is to try to understand why they did this, what was driving them. Uh, for instance, mm, I uh, had one, one person who was very angry at me in my uh, life mm, and uh, mm, said things which are not palatable mm, uh, and not true. And uh, it was difficult for me to uh, come to a place of compassion. Uh, I needed to first see why did he do this? What was the need? And I figured out mm, he simply felt that uh, uh, he was not famous enough. <laughs> he, no one liked him. He felt lonely uh, and, and he lashed out to others who uh, perhaps he felt they, they have something which, which he needs so much and wants so much, but cannot get. Mm, so uh, when I understood he's simply lonely, uh, then I went to visit him and said, here I have some cookies from Villa Vindavan um, and some good oil and, uh, and uh, let us talk about, and, and it worked. He simply had a need to be more recognized, uh, uh, which, uh, so, so when you, un when you understand what, what drives people, what is behind their words, what is behind their sometimes mm, uh, unpalatable action, uh, and, and see if you, uh, if, if, if you, then you can understand it. It's, it's almost like, do you have a, ch do you have children? Two. Uh, congratulations. Uh, but you know sometimes the child will scream and scream and scream and he is an absolute disturbance to the life. Then when you find out the poor boy is hungry, um, <laughs> wow, and I have a food uh, or prashadam uh, producing mechanism in my head, uh, then let me, let me feed the poor boy. Then uh, uh, it's easy, then he will become peaceful, and you can say, that, no, no, you do not even remember the screaming. You have to see people, uh, you have to see behind the surface, and once you see the need behind it, which they have, you feel some compassion. You feel, oh yeah, now I understand. He was screaming because he's hungry. I also don't like uh, hunger, uh, you know. And, and already by recognizing this, what drives him, you feel, yes, I'm a human being also. I can relate to this disturbance. And then you can at least forgive them. And then you can be compassionate. That maybe you have to keep uh, mm, uh, uh, an informed distance <laughs> because you know as soon as I come too close, the mechanism will start again and he will tick, bite again uh, or, or bark again. I mean, these are heavy words. Uh, say unpalatable words again. Uh, so so that is uh, all right. But but you cannot really show compassion when your heart is full of resentment. It's said when you want to feel compassion, you must face the suffering of the other. You can't afford to look away. And facing the suffering of another means, in some cases, to understand their sufferings. And once you do that, you feel that natural feeling, oh, yeah, and you will for forgive mm, and be compassionate. I want to repeat it, sometimes you have to be compassionate 
from the distance. <laughs> 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 That was a, that was a very helpful answer. I've, I've thought so. And uh, it seems to me like w there's a lesson in there, like a takeaway, that you have to locate their hunger, what they're hungry for. Yeah, nice. Thank you for that, Marsh. Jorgenath, would you like to share? It's practical experience. It's not theoretical uh, talk, yes. Yeah. We're all hungry for something, and sometimes it makes us lash out from angry. So find out that, what is what are they hungry for? Okay. Do you want to share something about that? I loved it. It was similar to what we were speaking about the other day, um, how when we understand a person's backstory, I really want to react sometimes. I really want to strike. I, I, and, and sometimes it's right. Like, I feel like there should be justice. That was wrong. And there's like this scale between justice and mercy. And when we really understand the person's backstory, the why behind their action, and sometimes it's like, well, there was no, he just acted out of spite. That's why he did it. Why did he act out of spite? You know, what, what, what is motivating the spite and the revenge? And what is that person's whole backstory? A lot of times you find perhaps a criminal and they just do so, something so abominable. You want to just like kill him instantly or you want to just strike back cruelly. And then you hear their story about actually what happened to them. I'm not justifying it, but... It's generally not a pretty story, uh, the, the backstory, but so it loosens up the sort of like the noose that we want to hang them with so we can be a little bit more compassionate. And I think that's sort of the business we're in is to be compassionate and try to sort of milk out a person's greatness. And that's the way to do it, zooming out, seeing their backstory. Great question. And it's a it's a it's a book going on right here. Perfect questions and perfect answers. That's what I see. Part two. Now for part three, another question. <laughs> so another question from Jumuna's uh, from from her group. Okay, um, and thank you very much for that answer. So many times in life, you come to crossroads: where to live, a job, family, relationships. And how do you know? when Krishna is giving you obstacles to push you in a direction to, okay, I'm going to go in that direction, or when do you dig in and persevere? So a lot of times it's said, oh, you know, you should consult with a teacher or friends, but a lot of times they're not going to actually say, oh, you should quit that job or you should move to another place. But sometimes it feels like there's so many obstacles. Should you keep persevering and dig in or when do you just say okay this is obvious krishna doesn't want this it seems when you're in it it's really hard to see which direction krishna is trying to send you in i have a very simple answer just sincerely asked in in in, in uh, what do you want me to do and and then you might feel you will see signs coming up more and more and more almost as a response mm. you know when when god wants you to go in a certain way and uh, uh, you, um, he will send signs uh, repeatedly I, I i like to tell you the little story from the Bible, I hope I, I get it absolutely right. Mm, uh, there was uh, this one person, uh, jo Jonas was his name, uh, who, who, who God told, go to this town and, 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 pre and, and, and tell about my glories, otherwise the people will suffer and go, to, uh, go to really down. But the Jonas did not want to do this, so he mm, mm, uh, 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 <laughs> he just didn't go to the town, but he went uh, to a harbor and took a ship headed to Sicily. He he he, <laughs> he thought I I escaped this uh, uh, this this duty this God given duty. So while he was on the ship. A terrible storm came up, and it became so 
heavy that the ship started to sink. So he went to the captain and said, uh, I think we will all drown because he wants me <laughs> to go back to the uh, country uh, and he will have his will. So why don't you throw me over the mm, uh, mm, overboard? What said the uh, captain? I've never heard about this method uh, calming a storm by throwing a man overboard. Uh, no, no, he said, Jonas, you try. So, choop, 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 choop. three, they threw him in the water and uh, he disappeared under the, uh, in the water and the storm immediately went down. Um, what happened to Jonas? Well, in the water there was a whale fish. <laughs> whale, he swallowed him. He had a very comfortable, luxurious uh, stay in the white stomach. It was warm, it was good. Uh, and uh, finally the whale, uh, after two days of swimming, uh, came on the ground. Boom, Jonas felt we have arrived. <laughs> he, he went out of the open mouth and the first person he asked mm, gave, him, uh, 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 gave him this answer. He asked, where are we? And the person said, we are in Theban. Oh, that was the town Jonas was supposed to go. <laughs> so repeatedly signs will come, uh, uh, repeatedly. And if you say yes, uh, uh, there can be two things, some obstacles, but you will have the strength to overcome the obstacles. Uh, um, if you say, or, if you, or the second is that everything will be just happening like a flow. So let's be brief. Uh, Raghunath style. Raghunath always can talk very concisely. Mm, uh, 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 you f you are not sure. Should I stay or should I go? So 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 if you are, uh, you, you may then turn and says, please. Tell me, should I stay or should I go? <laughs> and uh, and the signs will increase usually if, if you should in one direction, uh, go in one direction. And then you might have to do initially a leap of faith because you when you go into a new situation, you will leave your comfort zone. But you will see that there will be strength and intelligence to overcome your uh, your uh, hesitation um, and uh, or you will just enter a flow so uh, i always uh, really uh, uh, my spiritual master once said what is the use of religion if you can't talk with god you 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 can please do it you will see there will be an answer um, but you sometimes have to put the lid of your head. In other words, be a little open <laughs> so that the answer can fall uh, in your brain and in your heart. Uh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you. Very And such sincere questions you have asked. Well, first, uh, you know, when you were, it was going through all these conflict I was going through this year, and I turned right to you, and Jamuna, we also call Jamuna Jelly, because she makes jelly, but Jamuna was saying that, you know, sometimes we ask friends and we ask teachers, but we never get a definitive answer. I find that when it's a spiritual question, when I ask God the spiritual question, not just sort of like, should I buy the red car or the blue car? Not like that, but when it's a real spiritual, when my, my intentions behind, even my me even the business in my life, but it's a spiritual question. I find I either get a, a whisper or a very direct answer from Krishna or God, my higher power, uh, directing me in a particular flow. But I would just wanted to say, if you are joining late, we are with His Holiness Sachinanda Swami, regular uh, visitor on our podcast, inspiration to me in Kastuba, and a prolific author, a very prolific author who's written... Um, uh, fantastic books. 
including a book on the Gayatri Mantras, and including a book on chanting the holy name, the living name. That's a great book. And uh, oh, thank you for joining us. Now, now a book on meditation comes out that you will, everyone will like. It is a very accessible path to the rich inner world. Ooh. Yeah, but I cannot say it because of copy, uh, then someone will steal it. <laughs> okay, there are thieves out there looking for good ideas too. I also want to say that uh, Sachin and Swamini will be joining myself uh, in, uh, he'll already be in India, so we'll be joining him on the last few days for our pilgrimage this year, uh, October 18th, go to raganath.yoga. October 16th, we start that. And so the right days when we end up at Govardhan Hill, we're looking forward to seeing you again, like we did last year. And um, we are planning something, which we will announce tomorrow. We're planning something for next year. Got a good idea, wisdom of the sages. Anyway, let's uh, bring on our next question, Mr. Kostuba. Before we do, I just had one thought about you. You, you, you were speaking of that last answer and something clicked in my head that was um you are one of these contemplative devotees that likes to pray likes to speak to god likes to go within and i think many of us aren't i'm trying to become more like that and i think many of us aren't so much like that and so we turn to god to ask like okay i'm i'm trying to do this important endeavor and i don't know whether you want me to do it or not am i supposed to are these signs you're sending me to stop? You're making it so hard. Are you telling me to stop? Or are you saying, take the challenge and, and do it? But we expect to hear the answer when we never speak to him any other time. So we never, we've, we haven't opened up the conversation and then we expect like suddenly we're going to get answers. But maybe if we're talking more often, then we'll, it'll be easier to hear it when, when, when we ask that question. Yeah, think of it as a relationship. The more you invest in the relationship, the more alive it comes and the more it transpires back and forth. Thank you. Thank you. So now we bring on one of our favorite favorite devotees, also from Germany, Marish, like you. We have Narayani here. She's so good. Good devotee, right? Tell us, just, tell us just a, a little bit about your story, Narayani, how you came. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us a lot, actually. <laughs> Tell us very briefly your path to bhakti. Hare Krishna. Okay, I, I found bhakti through yoga and uh, through the music and yoga. And at some point I thought, I didn't even recognize the language, but I heard I first explored about kirtan, and I learned there's much more behind it. And basically everything I learned came through Raghu's trips to the pilgrimages, to the immersions and trainings. And um, I have my main, most of my main friendships are through the connections I got through the trips with Raghunath. That's the gist. I can't just say it, okay. yes. These are highly esoteric questions that she's coming forward with. These aren't just the beginner questions. This is her going deeper, deeper, wanting to know more, wanting to practice more. Okay. So I read in, in the Indra book that somebody asked him closer. Okay. So, so this is a biography of a devotee who used to do, uh, he passed away about 10 years ago or so. Um, and he was a very deep bhakti yogi that used to, he was famous for his kirtan. And he lived this simple, austere, very deep life, living in Vrindavan, doing, leading the 24 hour kirtan thing there. And he inspired so many people with his, with his example. And then uh, recently a, a book came out on his life. So that's the book you're talking about. Yes. So in this book, I read that somebody asked him, what do you think where will you be um in the uh, spiritual world and Indra said something like um i i i don't i'm not gonna make a decision i'll be in krishna lila and in gora lila and i ha i have to admit there's a lot of things i don't know but i've heard about the eternal goloka vrindavan i've heard there is a place where ram is and shiva and 
the forearmed Narayan forum, but I've never heard of, of an eternal Gora Leela. And so I was wondering, is there such thing? And if so, how can I imagine? How is this? Because also my limited knowledge with the limitations of time, I know he appeared for, I think, 48 years on like 500 something years ago. And so my understanding is limited and maybe I cannot even grasp how it's going to be, but I also feel very connected to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so I was wondering, oh, if there is a Gora, an eternal Gora Leela, how do I picture that? So you're asking that we read in the books like Srimad Bhagavatam about Krishna's eternal Leela in the spiritual realm, yes. beyond this world. So that you've wrapped your head around a bit. But you've also heard that now reading that statement from Ayanjur Prabhu that Sri Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, he comes in another form as a devotee of Krishna. But even he's got another place eternally existing in a spiritual realm. What is that true? And then also, can you be both at the same time? Is that part of your question? Yeah. Because that's what he said, right? I'm going to be simultaneously in both. So it's it's, a, it's an interesting question. Marsh, can you? Hey, all right. All right. Question. If I'd like to add an add-on question to that question, because it's a very deep question. It's, a very, it's one of those questions that get me really thinking for hours and days and weeks and months. My question is, is it important to think about these things? <laughs> or should I just try to control my senses and chant the holy name and Krishna will take care of me? That's my add-on question. Uh, my dear everyone on this call, there is no limit in subtleties in this philosophy, <laughs> but I would like to take the question to an um, area where we can all relate to and then give the subtleties. There is a general principle about where you go after you finish uh, this term in this uh, lifetime, uh, and that is wherever you are absorbed in, what is your, your mental context, it's there where you will go. Um, this is very important to, to note. I remember t talking to, about this to my uh, uh, biological father. He had understood that uh, life is eternal, that there is an eternal soul. And then it came to his uh, final exam. Uh, two, uh, two days before his death, he stopped communicating. He said, I need to now prepare my mind. My mind is so much invested in thousands of things. Uh, I need to focus on what is most important. When he left uh, his uh, body, we found two books on his night table, which he uh, referred to. One was the Bhagavad Gita, and the second was a book uh, which uh, established that we human beings are kind beings, and therefore we are called humankind. It has a lot of research which shows that people in stressful situations are not always just cruelly thinking about their maintenance, but become caring beings. Anyways, he understood, I need to now collect my thoughts and, uh, uh, and go to the most essential uh, um, things, because whatever my consciousness is, uh, that will build a bridge to the new reality where I will find myself either in my next body here in this world or in the eternal spiritual world. That's very important that we go back to such simple principles. Mm. It's almost like when you leave your house, before you leave your house, you, you should have a concept where you want to go, otherwise you will go in circles uh, and so on. So when you leave the house of your present body, it's very good to have an uh, clear orientation. Now, mm, uh, 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 the spiritual world has many rooms and you can be in 
many rooms simultaneously uh, in several rooms but it's not so so limited as this world where you can be only in one room and not at the same time in another uh, room uh, quantum physics has a lot to say about uh, double localities but let's not get into that mm. so uh, yes when a, a spiritualist focuses uh, has has two uh, uh, preferences the krishna and chaitanya there will be a krishna and world and a chaitanya world and he participates in both simultaneously uh, and how this is so that is a subject on its own <laughs> and we would need a few days uh, but uh, after this presentation i we can talk and i can give a little bit more but i, I think this would blow the computer in 1000 <laughs> pieces <laughs> when you like to beautiful uh, and when do we continue what, what sh, sh, how about me should i be worrying about this stuff where am i going to go when i die uh, should, well, well, yeah uh, yeah, there are two types of spirituality. There's a simple childlike uh, uh, spirituality, as expressed by this great saintly king, Prithu Maharaj. Just like a father, he addresses the Lord. You know best what is, you know what is best for me. Please arrange. That's one orientation. Uh, but there is also the orientation of uh, cultivating your spiritual life here in this world and so on it depends uh, the way i uh, experience you is uh, you try to cultivate that simple faith that do what you wish with uh, with me you know best that is a good very good position uh, but yes, So we have one more question, and maybe I'll just give a little context for this too. So um, like any other spiritual or religious tradition in the bhakti tradition, uh, there's a calendar, a yearly calendar, and there's so many holidays on that. Many times the holidays are related to these theological concepts. And um, But rather than the calendar that most of us are used to, which runs according to the movements of the sun or the movements of the earth in relation to the sun, um, the Vedic calendar that we follow has to do with the moon. And so it, it, it's a little bit different. And uh, both calendars require a little adjustment period to get it back on track on, the, on the, um, the, the solar calendar, which most of us are used to. There's a leap year. Um, every four years there's we add a day or so to the um to the calendar to make it snap back in place and on the lunar one every four years there's a leap month right and that's called purushota mas the the masa the month of purushotama of the supreme being you could say the supreme person so this year there, there is that purushota masa it's coming up and this quite and in this yoga tradition, it has a lot to do with how one can take advantage of these special times um, uh, in terms of their spiritual practice. And this Purushota month, it said it can be really good for one's spiritual practice. So this question has to do with that month. Yeah, it's, it's not so esoteric. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to know, I don't know if there's a reason why it is so um irregular in a way like just every other every three years or something there's a reason maybe a mystical story or something um and yeah what's the significance and what's recommended to to practice and maybe what are the benefits uh, yeah this uh month is inserted into the calendar to put everything in order uh, like um, uh, those who know the the months um, which are calculated or let us say the festival dates which are calculated according to the moon calendar have now all come very early 
um, in the year. And it goes earlier and earlier. So you need to push them back again so that they are at the right season, you know, with the, and, and uh, so on. Um, the season which are calculated by the sun calendar. So th therefore you put the so-called Purushota month, which is the extra month. Now, uh, in the Vedas, there's a story about this month. Uh, this month uh, felt uh, mm, uh, like a mala month. Mala means like like a stool excre excretion. All the other months look down on it. You, you are extra. What do you want here? Uh, you are not natural. You are out of the box months. And they got down on the case of the months. So the months cried very heavily and went to uh, Lord Krishna and said, save me, save me. Everyone is on my case here that I'm, a, I, I'm an intruder into the uh, solar calendar. <laughs> and uh, then Krishna said, no, I, I will give you extra pro protection and anyone who does extra spiritual uh, things at this month, uh, he gets a, a lot of benefit. In fact, I will call you after myself. My name is Purushottama, the best of all beings, the highest of all beings. So you will be called the highest of all months, Purushottama. And this is how you can make use of it. Um, there uh, what is good is that you uh, recite in this month the um, uh, 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which is called Purushottam Yoga. You know, the, uh, it is a chapter which describes how you can attain yoga with the Supreme Person. You know, 15th chapter in Sanskrit. It, takes, it will take you five or six, and on a tired day, eight months, eight, eight minutes, minutes, minutes. Then you can sing, sing one song, um, uh, uh, to Purushottam Krishna, who resides in Purushottam Kshetra, uh, uh, Lord, uh, as Lord Jagannath, mm, that is a famous song which ends with the line, Jagannatha Swamina Yana Patagami Bhava Tume yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so that is you can find that in in the songbook. Also, if you want to regulate you you uh, your intake of food, you may not take uh, these killing preparations: pizza with ice cream and chocolate uh, 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 around it every night uh, uh, before going to bed. You might <laughs> have some uh, restraint um, and um, just. Uh, bring your whole spiritual practice to a more vibrant form. No? This, but the, oh, and you can also take a lamp and offer it uh, to, to Krishna every day. That's also very good. We also do that. Fine. Uh, thank you so much. But these were specialized questions. <laughs> very specialized questions. Do we know when the month begins? I think it is on the 15th of July it starts. Uh, very soon, very soon. Something like this. You have to Google it for exact things. Around the 15th. 18th, 18th. Here is the, the calendar expert. 18th of July it starts for an entire month. Well, I want to do that 15th chapter reading. I think that would be nice. Maybe. 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 Oh, I mean, we could get crazy and, and study that chapter for that month. Just set Bhagavatam aside. I mean, that's a little crazy. What you could do, you could uh, read the Sanskrit and then just uh, read the translation of one verse and maybe make a comment on this and then the next day go to the next verse and so on. Maybe like instead of our nugget, we could do that or something. Uh, that could be our nugget because this is a short chapter. And there is there's absolute benefit. Everyone will be brilliant, effulgent, uh, uh, spiritually empowered, and and all of that. 
Thank you so much for that answer and for all of your answers today and for being on the show today, Maharaj. What's going on tomorrow, Raghunath? Are we back again? What are we doing? Tomorrow we're back at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Euro Time, and Maharaj is with us. We're looking forward to it. It's more Q&A from Live Live Audience. I want to give a special shout out to from your birthday today, Harry Ball. She's a regular Zoomer and other, and sincerely, I'm glad she's been with this podcast for many, many years. Years. years, many, many months, years, yes, and, and leap months, and leap months. Oh, that's right, we haven't had this for four years. This, this may be our first per show at the Moss. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Very special here with this big live, live crew at a holy place, Villa Vrindavan. A lot of bhakti yoga has been happening here. We're with sacred people in sacred places, doing sacred things, eating sacred food. <laughs> I'm excited. We're going to keep everybody posted and look for our photos that we're going to post on Wisdom of the Stages Instagram and my Raghunath Yogi Instagram. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. It's a beautiful day for a beautiful day. Let the magic continue to flow. Adi Bo.